Hello and welcome to Mr. Davis's Algebra 2 class. Uh, today we are going to be modeling with quadratic functions. This is found on lesson, in lesson 4.3 on pages 209 through 214 in your Algebra 2 books. So let's get started now. Modeling is uh, not the same as what you think. This, this is not uh, beauty and glamour shots. What this is is a mathematical representation of real events. Um, this can be anything. Uh, an example of this is throwing a ball. I picked this one because of throwing a ball is going to make a quadratic parabola, right? Like that. Well, if we discovered and found the equation that represents this line, then we have modeled the situation. Um, so that is modeling, and it can be with a quadratic like this, or maybe we're talking about uh, the stock markets. Right. Stock markets look like that. Yeah, that's modeling. Right. So there's many different types of modeling with math. Um, so to model a quadratic, because that's what this uh, lesson's about, this chapter's about, um, we need to have a couple things. One is uh, we can model if we have one vertex and one other point. So one vertex and one other point, which is two points total. Yeah. One vertex and one other point. Um, so that's, that's just two points. The other way is or with three points. So uh, three points, one more point. But this one has a very specific point, while well, these three are any three points. Um, now, there's probably going to be some people that are going to say, hey, I bet I could come up with three points that you can't make quadratic out of, because of there are some exceptions to the rule. It is not a quadratic if the three points are linear. Right, an example here is 1, 4, 3, 6, and 4, 7. If you graph those, those are going to be a straight line. Right? So if you graph those, they're going to be you know, a straight line. This is just a really rough draft. So that's a straight line, not a quadratic. Right? So that's one exception to the rule. A second exception to the rule is any points that will not pass the vertical line test. Remember, the vertical line test is one way for us to decide if it's a function or not. Quadratics are functions. So if I have this situation here, where I have 1, 4, uh, five, 5, 6, and then 1, 7, this will not pass the vertical line test because if I draw my vertical line, it's going to go through two points, make it not a function, but we know that they have to be. So that, those are two exceptions to the rules here. So let's start on uh, problem one. This is writing an equation uh, parabola, and it tells us uh, it contains the three points. Right? Uh, so we know that we can make a quadratic if it has three points. Um, one thing that we could say is uh, um, make sure that we can make it. Right, those three points. Are there any that will fail the vertical line test? Well, no, because they all have different x values. Another one is, uh, are they linear? And I don't think they will be since, um, yeah, I don't think it will be because the slope from here to here is 2, while the slope from 0 to there is 6. So the slope changes. So it's not linear, and it's not uh, going to fail the vertical line test. So what we want to do is, what is the formula in standard form? Now remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So that point right there. What we are going to do is we are going to plug in each point into this equation. Because of what we need to find is a, b, and c. That's the three unknowns. Right. So to find three unknowns, we need three equations. So that's why we need three points. That's why that three points is a uh, uh, necessity. Okay. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in uh, 0, 0. Right. This is y is equal to a... Oh, hold on. I already messed up. 
y is 0. So it's 0 is equal to a times x. Well, x is 0 squared plus b times x. Well, x is 0 plus c. And if we simplify this, a times 0 squared is 0. b times 0 is 0. So I really get 0 is equal to c. So we found 1 of our uh, three missing pieces. So let's plug in the next one, which is negative 1, negative 2. So y is negative 2, and it's equal to a negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. But didn't we just say c is equal to 0? And 0 is not going to change this at all, so I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to have to do some housekeeping stuff, so I'm going to say this is negative 2 is equal to, uh, let's see, negative 1 squared this is negative one, negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1, times a, which is positive a. And then uh, b times a negative 1 is negative b. So we get, that's simplified to negative 2 is equal to a, subtract b. The last one here is 1, 6. If I plug these in, I get 6 is equal to a times 1 squared plus b times 1. And that's going to go to, uh, see, 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to have 6 is equal to 1a plus b times 1 is 1b. So let's see what this did for us. And what we got right. Well, one is we got C. We found out what it is. And basically, what we've done is we've taken we've taken uh, these more complex equations and plugging them in. We we got these two, which are a little bit smaller, possibly a little bit easier to deal with. Now, what we have here in that green box is a system of linear equations. We learned about this in one of the previous chapters. So we know how to solve these. Right? We can use either substitution or elimination method. I think this one's set up really nicely for the elimination method. And that's what we'll notice right here. Right? So elimination method says, since I have uh, ops negative b and a positive b, I'm going to add them to eliminate. So I'm going to add here. Yeah, so I get negative 2 plus 6 is 4. It's equal to a plus a is 2a. And negative b plus a positive b is nothing. They cancel out. So they end up canceling out. So I get 4 is equal to 2a. Well, 4 is equal to 2a. We can divide by 2. Divide by 2. a is equal to All right, so so far we have A, we have C, we need to find B. Okay. And we can find B through one of these two equations. I'm going to just use this top one. Right. I'm going to use that top one there. So I'm going to write that over here. Uh, so we have negative 2 is equal to A, but we know A is a 2 minus B. So here we can minus 2, minus 2. And that gives me negative 4 is equal to a negative b. Well, if a negative 4 is equal to a negative b, then that means b is equal to a positive 4. So now I have a, b, and c. I'm going to go ahead and clear myself a little bit of space right here. Right. So I know a is 2, so I have 2x squared plus b, which is 4, so we have 4x, and c is 0, so I don't even need to write that down. And that's my modeled equation. Now, modeling by hand does take some time. And in fact, this one was a little bit easier because of this c equals 0 part. 
Okay, so that made it a little bit easier. Um, sometimes it won't be that easy, and you have to solve a system with three uh, solve a system with three unknowns, which takes a little bit longer. So that's solving in standard form by hand. This will be like uh, problems um, seven through twelve in your homework. So this is like problems seven through twelve in your homework. All right, moving on. Problem two: A player shoots a basket towards a hoop. Uh, the basketball follows a parabolic path through the point shown. If the center of the hoop is at 210, will the ball pass through the hoop? Oh, here we can obviously see that we have uh, Dirk Nowitzki uh, shooting a basketball. And if we look, it does look like it's going to be a parabolic arch. You know, and this is just kind of rough draft. Now if we eyeball it, it definitely looks like it's going in. And uh, it definitely looks like it's going to be a good shot. So what we want to do is we just want to make sure. We just want to make sure that uh, this is going to go in. So one thing that we want to do is just make double check, <clears throat> make sure it doesn't break any of the, the rules, and uh, say, does it pass the vertical line test with the points that they gave us? Yes, it obviously does. And then the second part is, do they make a straight line? No, they do not, because there's obviously you know, some difference there. So we can find model these with the quadratic, so that's good. All right. um, and this one is going to be like the ones I just talked to you about, where it's going to be a little bit harder, so I might need a little bit more space. So first off, standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. I need to plug in each one of my three points. I need to plug in 2, 10. I need to plug in 4, 12. And I need to plug in 10, 12. If I plug in 2, 10, I'm going to get 10 is equal to a 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. And that should reduce to, well here I'm going to have uh, 4, 2 squared is 4, and here I'll have 2b, so I'm going to have 10 is equal to 4a plus 2b. Writing a little bit into my picture, but it's alright. Next one, 12 is equal to a times 4 squared plus b times 4, and that's going to go to 12 is equal to 16a plus 4b. And the last one here is going to be 12 is equal to, um, let's see, we have a times 10 squared plus b times 10. And that's going to go to 12 is equal to 100a plus 10b. Right. That's a 10b over there by Nowitzki's hip. Now I have these three new equations. All right. Oh, forgot something here. Yeah, forgot something here. We forgot the c's on each one. Got the C's on each one. So, hopefully you guys know that, but that's a plus C, plus C, plus C on each one. There we go. Now we have our three unknowns. Okay. Now we have three unknowns. We need to solve this with uh, either substitution or elimination method. Um, I'm going to make a little bit of space here by erasing this work here. There we go. Let's clean that up a little bit. All right. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use elimination method. I think that we'll be able to use elimination method and uh, reduce some of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these top two and I'm going to say uh, 10 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c and 12 is equal to 16a plus 4b plus c. Now, what I'm looking at are these C terms right here. Right? They're both the same. So I can subtract one from the other and get rid of those C. So if I have 10 subtract 12, that's going to be negative 2. If I have 4 subtract uh, 16 A's, we're going to have negative 12 A. If I have 2 B subtract 4 B, I'm going to have negative 2 B. And C subtract C, well, they'll cancel out. So that gives, gets rid of the C for us. Now remember with the three equations, it makes these problems quite a bit longer. All right, so this is only one part. So I'm going to take, I'm gonna, let's see if I can save. Let's see if I can save those by grouping, by grouping them. Okay, so save this one. Hey, I'll move that equation down there. I'll get rid of my work here. Now I have to do that same process again, but this time let's use the bottom two here. So I'm going to have uh, 12 is equal to 16a plus 4b plus c. Now I'm going to have 12 is equal to 100a plus 10b plus C. Now here we have the same situation where we have those two C's that we can cancel off by subtracting. So I have 12, subtract 12 is 0, is equal to 16, subtract 100, Ooh, that's going to be about negative 84. Okay. And then we have 4B, subtract 10B, that's going to be about negative 6B. And those C's cross off, which was uh, our goal at the end of it. So now we have this equation here, which I will try to group. There we go. And I'm going to erase this setup. Now what I'm looking at are these two equations right there. I broke down three equations with three unknowns to two equations with two unknowns. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to break down this a little bit more. Um, now, sub, uh, elimination method, uh, we can still use it. Yeah, we can still use it. What I'm looking at here is these B terms, right? These B terms right here. Uh, because I think I can change this bottom equation to make those two cancel out. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do uh, right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bottom equation, I'm going to multiply it by 3. So let's uh, move that one out. I'm going to multiply it by 3 to get that, those B terms the same. So I'm going to you know, take this thing and I'm going to multiply it by 3. That's going to give me negative 6 is equal to negative 36 A's uh, minus 6 B's. There we go. Very nice. Now do you see how those C uh, or those B values will cross off? Again, here we need to minus. So I have 0 minus a negative 6, which is a positive 6. I have negative 84 A minus a negative 36. So that's really uh, 84, negative 84 A plus 36 A. So if I do that, uh, let's see, negative 84. This is going to be about negative 48a. And then negative 6b minus a negative 6b is going to cancel off. Now what we've done is we've gone from three equations with three unknowns to two.
two equations, right, so here's the three equations with three unknowns. We brought that to two equations with two unknowns, and what we've ended here with is one equation with one unknown, which is the best type. Now if I divide if I divide by negative 48 and divide by negative 48 I'm going to get my A value. And I'm going to go right over here so it's kind of out of the way and everything. But it's going to be a negative one point one two five. So all that work to find out that it was negative uh, negative point one two five. Right. But we are still not done. A was only part of it. So since A is only part of it, I need to also find B and I also need to find C. So I have many options to find B. You see how I have one two, three equations with just A and B in it. I can pick any one of those three, any one of those three to get, um, to find B. I think choosing number three down here is going to be the easiest because it looks like the numbers are a little bit smaller. So let's take A and plug it in. So I'm going to have negative two is equal to negative 12 times negative 0.125 minus 2b. And 12 times negative 1.25 is negative 1 and a half. So we have negative 2 is equal to negative 1.5 minus 2b. And since it's getting a little bit crowded down here, let's go ahead and move this right over here. Right. Let's add 1.5. Just going to give us a negative 0.5 is equal to a negative 2b. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. B. is going to be, let's see, negative 0.5 divided by negative 2. Oh, I see. I've made a mistake. Right here, we have a negative times a negative, which should be a positive here. Alright, so we're okay. So it should be a, let's rewrite this as negative 2 is equal to a uh, positive 1.5. Now it's positive because of I forgot to do negative times a negative. So a positive 1.5 minus 2. Alright, now if we minus 1.5, minus 1.5, I get negative 3.5 is equal to negative 2b. Divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and that will give us b is equal to a positive 1.75. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and write that up here by that a. So I'm going to write b is a 1.75 positive. Alright, now we have A and B, we need C. So now we need to look back at the original three equations. It's original three equations. Um, those original three equations have A, B, and C. On. So I can get rid of all this other work. So I'm just going to kind of clean, clean up a little bit and get rid of all of There we go, let's try it again. There we go. It's a little better. Alright. So I can use any one of those 
and plug them in and try to find C. So I think I might use this this top one here, which I'll rewrite, which was 10 is equal to uh, 4 times A, which is 4 times negative 0.125 plus 2B, which is 2 times 1.75 plus C. So, doing my uh, math, this is going to be 10 is equal to uh, negative 0.5 plus Three point five plus C. Well, this is going to be ten is equal to three plus C. Subtract three, subtract three. I get seven is equal to C. That's my third piece. So I have my three pieces there. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase all of my work and just write down my equation that I found. Let's get rid of all that. My equation is going to be y equals negative 0.125x squared plus 1.75x plus 7. So that is the equation. So that's good. Now the question actually asks if the center is at 12, 10, will it pass through the hoop? Well, what they're asking is, is 12, 10 a reasonable answer? So what I can do is I can put 12 in for x, 10 in for y, and see if everything ends up balancing out. So I want to know, does 10 equal, right, does it equal, 0.125x is 12 squared, plus 1.75 times 12 plus 7. So this is 10. Uh, does it equal 0.125 times 144? Right, 12 squared is 144. Uh, plus 1.75 times 12 is 21 plus 7. And don't want to forget that minus on there. Okay. Uh, 10 is equal to 144 times negative uh, 0.125 is going to be negative 18 plus 21 plus 7. If I do all this, I get negative 18 is plus 21 is 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. Does 10 equal 10? Yes. The answer is yes. Uh, it does. Yes, the ball passed through the hoop. And obviously it would have because of Dirk Nowitzki shooting it. So, like I said, it does add quite a bit of work when you have three unknowns. All right? Quite a bit of work, right? Um, Now the good news is, as they get more and more complicated, we have ways to do it. So this one here, we're going to use quadratic regression, uh, which is basically using calculators. Um, so what we have here is a table showing the, the time of the day and the predicted te temperature in Sacramento, California. Um, this is an October day, so it looks pretty nice, right? Getting up to 81. All right, so it says, what is a quadratic model for this data? Well, the first thing that um, we need to do for if we're going to be using calculators to do this, because this is obviously really going to be a complicated one. So what we need to do first is open up our, our calculators. So this is the home screen for our calculators. Uh, what we want to go to is lists and spreadsheets, right? That, that's let's see, right here that I just highlighted. It's lists and spreadsheets. And go to that. And it's going to bring up a, a spreadsheet. Each column should represent a uh, a variable. So this first column, I'm going to do time. Uh, one thing about time is, doesn't it repeat itself every day? Right? There's an eight in the morning. There's an eight at night. So we need to use military time. 
right? Which is pretty easy when we start um, when we start at, in the morning because all the times are the same. So we have 8 a.m. We have 10 a.m. We have 12 p.m. Now 2 p.m. is actually 1400 in military time. And then 4 p.m. is 16, and 6 p.m. is 18. Typing in the predicted temperatures for each one of those, it goes 52, 64, 72, 78. Looks like a nice day. 81 and 76. Okay, one thing you you might want to just double check when you get to the end is that both your columns are the same length. That just is a double check to make sure you didn't forget any or add an extra one on accident. Okay, now next is we want to make one of these X and one of these Y. So I'm going to do that by going up to the top here where we have the A. And I'm going to go to the variable button, which is right above the 9 right here. So I'm going to hit variable, and I'm going to store a variable. And I'm going to store the variable X. So now I've labeled these ones as being the X column. And in B, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit the variable button, store variable, and Y. So now I have my X's and my Y's. All right. Next, what we're going to do is quadratic regression. Now that is found if we hit menu. And it's actually a statistic. So we're going to go to statistics and stat calculation. So we go back, it's uh, menu 4, 1. If you look on here, it's got number 6, which just says quadratic regression. Right, that's exactly what this problem says. So, the X list, it's wanting to know where are my X's. Well, my X's, we labeled as X's. Isn't that nice? And the Y list, the Y list, we labeled as Y's. So that's really nice too. Then from there, if we just hit tab and go all the way down, you know, these things aren't quite so important. And it says first results column. All right? We just want to make sure it's not on a column we've been using. We used columns A and B. C is open, so we can leave it as C. We can leave it as C or D. doesn't really matter, but we just don't want to have it A or, a or B. Right? And if it's wrong, if it's, uh, say it's B and you want it to be C, just type in C. Okay. okay. All right. So it gives us this information here, which tells us, let's see. It says a few things. One here tells us the form they used, which is standard form, right? A times X squared plus B times X plus C. It tells us A is negative point four six eight seven four nine 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 eight. It tells us B is 14.7, and it tells us C is negative 36.12. Now, a few other things here. Right here we have an R squared. R squared is something that tells us how good of a job our modeling is. Uh, it's a scale from 0 to 1. All right? 1 being it's a perfect model, 0 being it's a horrible model. So this one being 0.99, I think is a, a pretty, pretty good model. I think don't think there's very much error there. So it's a pretty good model. Um, pretty much anything 0.8 or above is pretty strong. So this is very, very strong. So, do we have our A, B, and C written down? Let's go back to our equation. Right. Our, quadratic, uh, model, our quadratic model for this data is, well, I wrote it down here nicely, right. but it's y equals negative 0.469x squared plus 14.716x minus 36.121. Ooh. Then it says, um, use your model to predict the high temperature for the day. At what time does this occur? Well, again, we're going to be using our calculators. Okay? So I'm going to go to my calculator, and I don't want to use this anymore. I want to use my graph. Okay? So let's go um, to Documents. We're going to insert a graph. Okay? And one thing you might want to check is if you, right now you see how it's on function two right here function function two you might want to check as of yep look at function one function one is our equation 
Our calculators, calculators are pretty smart. They type it in for us. And look, they did so many decimal points. It's a way better job than we would have done. So we have it in there. I'm going to hit enter. Yeah. Now, it's got this line here, right? Well, let's think about what's wrong. What's wrong is we are too close to this. Our, our window needs to be fixed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to menu, window, here, and I'm just going to use zoom fit. What this is going to do is it's just going to uh, fix it so we see it a little bit better. See, here it is right here. Come like this. I think what we need to do is fix our window. So this gives us a little bit of a better idea. Now let's go to window and uh, window settings. And let's do it ourselves. So first off, the X is in our graph for time, right? And well, we started at 8 in the morning and we ended at 6 p.m. So we can do that here if we want. We can start at 8 in the morning. And 6 p.m. was 18. Right? Because we're trying to find the high. Obviously, the high is going to happen in there. The Y scale is the temperature. Now, I don't think we need to go to negative 259 degrees. Because I don't think it's going to be that cold. But our, our temperatures are basically between you know, 52 and 81. So I'm going to go a little bit under. I'm going to say 50. I'm going to go a little bit over. I'm going to say 90. Oh, now that's a nice curve right there. Now, we need to find the maximum. The maximum is happening in here somewhere. But the calculator can calculate for that for calculate that for us. So let's go back to menu. Let's go to analyze, and we want to find the maximum, right? Now these dotted lines mean that we need to sandwich it. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to go over here to sandwich that maximum point. If we look, it tells us the maximum right there: 15.7, 79.4. 15.7, 79.4. What this tells us is the maximum temperature. Uh, throughout the day, it's going to be about 79.4 or 80 degrees. Okay. And that time that's going to happen is at 15.7, which 15 is uh, 3 o'clock. Yeah. So it's 3 o'clock, 0.7, which means it's almost 4 o'clock. Almost 4 o'clock. Now, some of you guys might be saying, hey, why is the maximum temperature 79 degrees when in the, the chart, the table is 81? Okay. Remember, this is a model, right? It's, it's just going to model the situation. So this curve is going through the middle of all the points. Right? Some points can be higher and some can be lower, but this is going to be the average, right? what we should expect. So could it be a little bit higher? I think so. But this is what we could expect. Okay, very good. Let's go back to our. Right, here's our homework assignments 7 through 17 odd, 18 through 27 all. A um, couple notes on this. One is. 17 through, uh, 7 through 17 odd, you guys uh, are allowed to use your, your calculations or um, quadratic regression. All right. Thank you for listening and have fun.